good morning to all students welcome to this online classes i'll be taking that the first class of special theory of relativity what so far we have discussed these are the topics that the introduction of the relativity frame of references construction of an arbitrary frame of reference events internal frame of inner cell frame of reference newton's first law of motion newton and relativity within this topic we have covered this galilean transformation newton and force and the momentum newton's second law of motion newton's third law of motion newton and relativity then we have discussed the maxwell equations and ether space then we jumps to the Einstein relativity where we have discussed that Einstein's postulate clock synchronization in an inner, inter, inner cell frame, Lorentz transformation, relativistic kinematics, length contraction, time dilation, simultaneity and the transformation of the velocities, addition of the velocities. So today I will be discussing that the transformation of velocities, addition of velocities. Suppose, relative to a frame of reference S, a particle having a velocity u is equal to uxi plus uyz plus uz of k, where ux is equal to dx by dt. In a similar fashion, we could represent this u is equal to uy divided by dt and uz is equal to dy, dz by dt. Now, what we require is that the velocity of this particle as measured in a frame of reference S prime, which is moving with the velocity of Vx relative to the S. If particle has a coordinate x at time t in a inner cell frame S, then the particle have the coordinate x prime and time t prime in inner cell frame S prime where with the help of Lorentz transformation we could represent this x this x is equal to gamma of x prime plus vx t of prime and t is equal to gamma of t prime plus vx x prime divided by c square now suppose the particle is displaced to a new position with a small displacement of dx then its coordinates are x plus dx and the time will be t plus of dt in inner cell frame S. Then in a inner cell frame S prime it will be at a position of x prime plus of dx prime at a time t prime plus of dt prime. In a similar fashion this x plus of dx we could represent with the help of the Lorentz transformation. In the same fashion, this time t plus of dt is equal to gamma t prime plus dt prime plus vx x plus dx prime divided by c square. And once correlating the, co the respective term for this x and x prime and a dx and a dx prime, then we'll end up with a relation that dx is equal to gamma of dx prime plus vx dt prime and dt is equal to gamma dt prime plus vx dx prime divided by c square so that I could represent I have to represent this dx ux is equal to dx by dt from here I could find out this ux is equal to dx by dt now simply dividing these two relations then we have this dx plus of vx dt prime divided by dt plus of vx dx prime divided by c square dividing all the relation its a numerator and a denominator with the help of dt prime then I have I could I could represent this dx prime divided by dt prime I am representing with the help of vx prime plus of vx plus divided by 1 plus of vx or ux prime divided by c square where this ux prime is equal to dx prime divided by d prime is the x velocity of the particle in the frame of reference s prime 
In a similar fashion, using a relation that y is equal to y prime and z is equal to z prime because its orthogonal components will be remaining the same because the frame of reference as prime is moving in a direction of x with a velocity of vx. Then simply this u y is equal to will be representing dy by dt. Then this dy because y is equal to y prime and simply I could write this dy prime. So dt we have already a relation dt is equal to gamma of dt prime plus of vx dx prime divided by c square from here we'll be end up with a relation that ui is equal to ui prime divided by gamma 1 plus vx ux prime divided by c square represented with the help of equation number 4 then a similar fashion that uz is equal to uz prime divided by gamma 1 plus vx ux prime divided by c square now equation number 5 this inverse transformation will be followed by just replacing this vx is equal to minus vx and interchanging this primed with the with the unprimed and unprimed variables with the help of primed variables. Now equation number three, four and six if we represent in the inverse transformation then ux prime ux prime is equal to ux ux minus vx divided by minus vx ux divided by c square it is not prime ui prime is equal to ui gamma 1 minus vx ux divided by c square and the uz prime is equal to uz divided by gamma 1 minus vx ux divided by c square and we'll be representing with the help of equation number 6 now this ux prime ui prime and uz prime are the velocities these velocities are measured in a frame of reference s prime which is moving with the velocity of vx in particular suppose if ux is equal to c what we are presuming that the particle having only the ux component which is moving with the velocity of c and keeping this ui and the uz is equal to zero from equation number six what we observe that just putting the in place of the ux is a c then you have ux prime is equal to c minus vx divided by one minus vx is meaning the vx then we have a c divided by c square and it is cancel out now you're just taking the c common in both the side then you have finally end up with a ux prime is equal to c what this relation depicts that how important this relation is that if a particle is, has the speed c in a frame of reference s it has the same speed c in a s prime this is a agreement this is an agreement which is a second postulate of Einstein's special theory of relativity so it means that if a particle or the light because we are talking about the particle because the speed of the light we are dealing there either I could say that if a particle or light has a speed c in a one frame of reference then it has the same speed c in all frame of reference this mathematically we demonstrated that how the velocity transformation is taking place with the help of this Lorentz transformation and how it is validating our second postulate of Einstein's special theory of relativity now considering a case now considering a case in which a particle is moving at a speed that is less than to c that is suppose you again presuming that u y is equal to u z is equal to zero and ux is less than to c from equation number six from equation number six this ux prime minus c we have ux prime is equal to ux minus vx divided by one upon one minus vx ux divided by c square just taking this ux prime minus c is equal to then subtracting the c both this side then just the computing simple calculus simple algebra simply simplifying these terms then finally we end up with the relation equation number eight where this ux prime minus c is equal to ux minus c c plus or vx divided by c one minus vx ux divided by c square now if s prime is moving relative to s with a speed less than to c that is the mod of vx is less than to c then along with we have already considered as ux is less than to c then it is 
it is very simple to represent that the right hand side of equation number 8 will be always negative because this ux is less than to c and this vx is again less than to c then this quantity is providing always the negative quantity on the right hand side of the equation number 8 now just to confining this relation this ux minus c will be less than to 0 if ux ux less than to c and a vx less than to c or ux prime is less than to c simply similarly by writing equation number 6 in a term of ux plus of c just adding this plus c both the side then just a simple calculation this ux minus vx divided by 1 minus ux vx divided by c square plus of c just a simple algebra and a finally computing these terms then finally we'll be ending up with the relation that ux plus c c minus of vx c 1 minus ux plus ux vx divided by c square but the right hand side of equation number 10 is always positive provided that what we have provided that this ux less than to c and a vx less than to c that is i could say that this ux prime plus c is greater than zero if ux is less to c vx is less than to c then I could represent with the equation number 11 from which from which it says that this ux prime is greater than to minus c putting this equation number 9 and 11 together now we find that the ux mod of u x prime is less than to c if mod of ux is less than to c and a vx less than to c these results are depicting that if a particle has a speed less than to c in one frame of reference then its speed is always less than to c in another frame of reference provided that the other frame of reference is moving at a speed less than to c now with the help of example we will see that how it happens and how these transparency transformation are following our Lorentz transformation and validating our postulates of special theory of relativity now these s and s prime are two frame of the reference this s prime is moving at a velocity of minus vx along towards this frame of reference s there are two objects a and b object a is moving with a velocity of 0 0.099 c relative to the frame of reference s and b is stationary in a frame of reference s prime which is moving with a velocity of vx is equal to minus 0 0.00 c relative to s according to the newtonian kinematics v will measure a as approaching at a speed of just adding because two bodies are moving in the opposite direction the velocity just adding up then we have a velocity what we are observing now the resultant velocity what we are feeling this object a and v are feeling that the velocity is 0.99c plus of 0.99c is equal to 1.98c which is higher than the speed of the light which is not possible however according to the Einstein's law of relativity uh, relativity and the velocity addition the velocity of a relative to b that is the velocity of a as measured in frame of reference s prime then again from equation number six then i could represent this ux prime is equal to point that is ux that is 0 0.099c minus of plus of vx that is the minus of vx that is a minus point uh, point nine nine c divided by 1 plus of because ux and vx are the same then this is squaring this term 0 0.99c of its square and finally you have this point 1 point nine eight c divided by 1.98013 then finally we will can estimate the velocity of this ux prime is 0.99905c which is less than to c in agreement of equation number 12 in this lecture we have made use of requirement that all speeds be less than or equal to c to understand physically why is the case 
it is necessary to turn to consideration of relativistic dynamics in next lecture i'll be discussing about the relativistic